Palatoy's beloved Action Man toy line was insanely popular with British children from the mid-1960s through all of the 70s and well into the first half of the 80s, receiving the first and only Toy of the Decade award to ever be presented. But despite 18 years of phenomenal success at retail, Action Man landed on the wrong side of a corporate decision to cease toy development within the UK, and the line abruptly ended in 1984. Parent company General Mills would then sell the Palatoy company and all of its trademarks, and ownership of the Action Man brand would subsequently pass through the hands of a few different companies, before finally finding a home with Hasbro in 1991. Then in 1993 Hasbro rebooted Action Man and started selling these products in Britain, Australia and throughout Europe. Now akin to an extreme sports sci-fi secret agent ninja, this reimagined Action Man was very popular with the children of the 90s, but his odd body proportions and inferior articulation left collectors of the original Palatoy Action Man less than impressed. This range did however provide us with a very interesting sub-series of figures when Hasbro released a limited edition run of six Action Man James Bond figures that were inspired by six different 007 movies. So polish your thunderballs and pour yourself a vodka martini, shaken not stirred of course, as we take a look at the man with the plastic gun. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome to Iconicon 2022. And now, for your eagle eyes only, it's Action Man on Hasbro's Secret Service. Much like another iconic cinema hero, Indiana Jones, James Bond has experienced a very hit and miss history with toy tie-ins. And while there have been some truly wonderful offerings such as the 1960s tin plate Aston Martin from Gilbert, most of the best James Bond products have been toy interpretations of his many cars. Because when it comes to action figures, Bond has had some real stinkers. With toy company Gilbert also producing a range of 12 inch Bond figures in the 1960s, but these had the same limited articulation as a Ken doll, and Sean Connery's head sculpt was truly horrendous. In 1979, the Mego Corporation released a range of James Bond figures based on the movie Moonraker. But these also left a lot to be desired, so when I first saw Action Man James Bond figures in toy shops in the late 90s, I got very excited. But I was probably distracted by the stunning packaging art, because these figures, well, saying that they're superior to the Mego and Gilbert offerings isn't exactly a measure of success. The first two Action Man James Bond figures were released in 1998, and were based on the Pierce Brosnan movie Tomorrow Never Dies, and the Sean Connery film Thunderball. And the box designs are truly gorgeous, with the 007 logo being coloured in the signature orange that is now synonymous with the Hasbro Action Man era. The front flaps of the boxes fold open to reveal the figure twist tied behind a clear window, and there is more impressive packaging design work on the inside of the flap. The Tomorrow Never Dies figure is dressed in a nicely tailored tuxedo, complete with a waistcoat and bow tie, and the shoes even come with socks, a piece of clothing which is rarely given to Action Man sets. Bond also wears his customary watch and he is armed with a Walther PPK pistol. And this is where the problems with these figures begin. Hasbro's new design of Action Man gave us a figure with a nicely sculpted yet oversized head, a very small pair of feet which makes the figures difficult to stand on their own, and bowling ball sized hands. 
and it is a real challenge to get the figure to hold the Walter pistol because it is also oversized and way too big for Action Man's already beefy paws. So that's what I've been doing wrong all these years. <laughs> a unique feature of these new figures is the white underpants they've been issued with. Because Action Man has always had blue pants, well, ever since he started wearing them in 1979 that is. Because prior to that, The Thunderball-inspired Action Man figure is dressed in the iconic diver's outfit that was worn by Sean Connery in the 1965 film. The set includes blue swim fins and a face mask, and the figure wears a diving knife on his calf, a watch on his wrist, and he carries a Walter PPK and a spear gun. From a collecting perspective, this Thunderball outfit is a good choice by Hasbro, because the colour scheme really stands out when displayed next to the black and white tuxedo from Tomorrow Never Dies. There's just one huge problem with this Thunderball outfit, and it's an issue that has plagued all of Action Man's rubber diving suits dating all the way back to the 1960s. And that's the fact that the rubber material used to make this diving jacket easily perishes over time. So if you're looking to add the Action Man James Bond Thunderball figure to your collection, then I recommend getting a mint in box example and never, ever opening it. I think you got the point. In 1999, Hasbro released two more Bond figures in the Action Man range, including one dressed in the skiing outfit from the opening of the Roger Moore film, The Spy Who Loved Me, and another Pierce Brosnan entry, with this outfit based on his first appearance as 007 in the 1995 film, GoldenEye. Hasbro also continued with the same fold open front flap box design, and the art adorning all four of these figure packages is simply beautiful. When displayed together, they look absolutely stunning, and the designs are so good, it's impossible for me to pick a favourite. I can, however, pick a clear winner when it comes to the figures, and that is this gorgeous yellow and red skiing outfit from The Spy Who Loved Me. For many 007 fans, this is the defining Roger Moore Bond film. Keeping the British hand up, sir. The opening scene of The Spy Who Loved Me, from which this figure was inspired, ends with Bond skiing straight off a cliff top, seemingly into oblivion, only to open a parachute cheekily bearing a gigantic Union flag. It's an iconic moment from an iconic franchise, and Hasbro cleverly incorporated the Union flag into the box design, but it's a real shame that the figure doesn't actually come with this parachute accessory. Also strangely absent here is Bond's trademark wristwatch with this figure being the only one of the six Action Man 007 figures to not come with a scaled down timepiece. What the figure does have though is a striking yellow jumpsuit with white undershirt, red ski boots, black gloves and a red backpack, with the ensemble being topped off by a red cap and a pair of yellow rimmed goggles. This figure is also equipped with skis and ski poles, and the skis have a well engineered connecting mechanism, and once attached to the boots they are held in place very securely. So securely, in fact, that this is the only James Bond figure in my collection that doesn't need to use a display stand to prevent Bond from nosediving off the display shelf. When Pierce Brosnan brought the franchise into the 90s with his first appearance as James Bond in GoldenEye, it had been six years since the release of the previous 007 film. GoldenEye opens with a heart-stopping bungee jump down the wall of a dam. Beg your pardon, forgot to knock. <laughs> And this Action Man figure is dressed in the costume that Bond wears in this opening scene. This all black tactical outfit includes a large pair of boots that are so big that Action Man's tiny feet just swim around inside them, making this figure almost impossible to stand on his own. This interpretation of Commander Bond also has a cool looking tactical vest that is covered in pouches that carry one of 007's explosive devices. Hasbro have also equipped this Bond with a watch that has a thicker strap than previous iterations, a grapple gun, and his updated version of the Walther that now has a silencer fitted, and this pistol fits much better in Action Man's hand than the previous version. And of course, this figure just wouldn't feel complete without the titular GoldenEye device. So Hasbro have provided that too, and this scaled down accessory is manufactured from a combination of die cast metal and translucent amber coloured plastic. It's a neat little accessory, albeit one that Bond struggles to get a grip of here. In the year 2000, Hasbro would release the final two Action Man James Bond figures. The first of which was based on the film The World Is Not Enough, the third Brosnan entry in the Action Man range. And finally we were offered Commander Bond in his full naval uniform from the film You Only Live Twice, 
which makes for the second Connery appearance in the toy line. Bafflingly, Hasbro opted to move away from the handsomely designed boxes with folding front flaps that made the first four figures so appealing to me, and instead released the figures in window boxes. And these don't look bad, it just makes for a very disjointed display if you're a mint in box collector. The world is not enough figure to pick Spawn disguised in a Russian uniform that features some well detailed ID patches hanging from his jacket pockets. While the You Only Live Twice figure sees 007 dressed in his full Royal Navy uniform, complete with a nicely detailed officer's cap. With no further Action Man and James Bond crossover figures being produced, we ended up with one Roger Moore figure, two outfits based on Sean Connery films, and a total of three Action Men from the Brosnan era. And I guess this kind of makes sense since Pierce Brosnan was the actor playing 007 at the time that these figures were being released in toy stores. And while I understand that when pitching new ideas to the Hasbro marketing team, the designers were likely required to present concepts that were visually distinct from previous versions, it is still disappointing that we got three Brosnan figures and not a single Timothy Dalton interpretation. And if Hasbro were looking for variety in costume design, then I'd like to suggest the suit he was wearing on the way to Felix Leiter's wedding in the opening scene of Licence to Kill. And they could have easily added the working parachute accessory from the Action Man skydiver figure. Hasbro's run of Action Man James Bond figures are an esoteric series of toys, and the inclusion of limited edition numbering actually makes them quite easy to find today, so don't be conned into overpaying for them. Countless other toy lines overused limited edition numbering on their action figure packaging in the 90s, convincing thousands of collectors to buy up these toys in quantity, thinking that they would later cash in on the rarity of the product and have some kind of massive vintage Star Wars payday. As is, just one of these sets of 12 backs could go for as high as $10,000. They'll print anything these days. When it comes to toys, my experience has taught me that truly limited edition items are sold as one of 25 or one of 100, and sometimes even one of 500. And I know for a fact that Hasbro's Action Man James Bond crossover figures were produced in the tens of thousands. And with so many naive collectors gobbling them up at the time, they are now more readily available mint in the box than most of Hasbro's general release Action Man product. All of these Action Men figures were also sold with actual film frames, except for the World Is Not Enough figure, which instead included storyboards. And it should be noted that none of these figures feature head sculpts of the respective actors. Instead, Hasbro chose to use their well-established Action Man face, and they differentiated the figures by way of the movie-specific outfits. And as an almost lifelong Action Man fan, okay, well, I didn't really like the 90s Hasbro stuff, but... I do still appreciate the hybrid aspect of this overall concept. These figures aren't exclusively Action Man and they are not exclusively 007. They're both and that's pretty cool. And although these figures are quite clunky and definitely cheesy, can you imagine that pitch meeting at Hasbro when someone first suggested marrying the most iconic British film franchise to the most quintessentially British toy line ever made? It should have been a slam dunk. But it wasn't. If you're looking to add these figures to either your Action Man or James Bond collection, then I highly recommend acquiring them mint in the box, because they're quite affordable if you shop around. And the loose toys are a lacklustre effort, which makes Hasbro's decision to change that gorgeous box design two thirds of the way through the run even more infuriating. Standard operating procedure. Boys with toys. While I do have a soft spot for these Action Man James Bond figures, they are far from perfect. But now that they're safely tucked away in the Analog Toys collection, they can live to die another day. So thank you all for watching, and to make sure that you don't miss out on any other excellent content during Iconicon, you'll find a link to the schedule on the official Iconicon website in the description below. There's four more days of content to come, and you don't want to miss out. <laughs>